Okay, so those holes are all welded up and you can see how good that's come up. There was no distortion at all. And same with this back one here. And uh, that's really important because now I don't have to waste the time using any fillers there. Just epoxy primer over the top, give her a rub back and she's ready for paint. Welcome aboard everybody. Back to another episode and what we're going to talk about today to begin this one is the seals on these old classics, especially on this Tirana, what we've done to it. So what we've done, as you've seen us, we've replaced the seals with aftermarket. Now, we'll go back to this one that I took off the left-hand side. And what they've got right there at the very front of the sill, which is down here, is that big factory pressed hole. Now, I'm not sure, but my take, why they're put in there is for when that car is dipped. Back in the day, it's been in the factory and it's come through the bath, it's been dipped, and then when they come out of the bath, they drag the car up out and then it's tipped up on its end. And it lets all the fluid drain out. And that's what I'm assuming that hole is for. So what we've done is we've gone ahead, we've put that factory hole back in the end of that sill. And what they have in them is this uh, little rubber bung here. And they push in, and I assume this is the reason they've done that back in the day, as I say, once they've come out of the bath, and then they put these rubber bungs in. And if you can see there on the camera, what they've got is that little slot or scallop right there in the centre. When that pushes through, in there like so, through that sill panel, then it clips into the centre of that rubber bung. So if you're going to do this job and you're going to replace these sills, what you want to be very mindful of is don't make the hole too big because what will happen where it pushes through and, and it ends up in the centre there, your sill if you like, if you make the hole too big it becomes obviously too sloppy and then the thing will just slop around in the hole. But if you make it too small, once you push that in, and it's got to be exact, once you push that in, it, it, the hole, if, if it's too small, it won't let the bung sit down and in and seal nice and flush on that outer piece. So as I say, if you're going to do that, make sure the hole's correct size, because then you have a really nice exact flush fit. But that's my take on the reason why that hole's there. If there's anyone out there that knows that work for GM in the day, please comment back, let us know, so we can let everyone know exactly why that hole was there. But if you look at this, going back to this bit of sill, if you look there on the very bottom of it, what we did is when we replaced the actual sills, we put the holes, there was one there and one a little further back down the sill under the, the car there. And we mimicked those to exactly what they were. But apparently, and according to sources that know these things really well, they were not a factory option. Um, this particular one has been put in later, obviously, and they've tried to um, use it as a rust proofing area to get up in that sill to poke the nozzle of a gun up in so they can get all their rust proofing gear right up through it. But unfortunately, I'd say with this sill, by the time they got to it, it was too late. It was already too far gone. But that's not factory, that little hole there. So what the owner requires us to do now, he's decided he doesn't want those holes because as I said, we went ahead and we put the holes in the sills. But he said, look, no, I really don't want to go that way. I want to have the no hole thing. So now we've gone ahead and welded those two up that we already put in the bottom of that sill, which is fine, it worked out really good. But we, of course, we'll leave the end one. That's what he wants. That's a factory thing. But to go back to the beginning of this, I believe when it came out of the bath, that was the whole deal. So the car was tipped up to drain all the fluid out of it. And of course, it had come, it had gushed out this end of the sill, which makes logical sense. I may be incorrect there. But if you can let us know, please do. That'd be great to know. So we can let all you guys know. Just a small little point there, but just one of those technical points. If you're really into the finer bits on the Tiranas, which a lot of you guys out there really are, it'd be nice to pass that info on. I can't give the, the rock solid guarantee on it because I really honestly don't know, but that's what I believe anyway. So we'll, we'll um, carry on with the sills. That one's on, done, it's finished. Um, we'll go around onto the other one next. We'll do the same thing, hole in the end of it, weld the holes up underneath, and then that side will be done and we'll just carry on from there. Okay, let's see what Pops is doing on his side. Pops, what's going on, mate? 
So basically what I'm playing with here at the moment is the, this gap here between the top of the guard and this the cowl or plenum chamber. Now back in the day, the factory fit up here, I've got to be honest, they were, they were not nice. If you look at any of these Tiranas, well I personally anyway, you walk up to it and you just look at those gaps and they are terrible, they're shocking. But you just couldn't let something like that go from the factory, they're just, just such an ill fit that we decided to make these gaps here a lot nicer so we've brought them out and up a bit and it's a little bit of a uh, mission to do that but it gives you a better profile along that line this line and it gives you a nice um, gap that starts off a little bit smaller at the back and it blends out up a bit bigger into the to meet the back of the bonnet gap there with your plenum chamber so it'll taper up and have a nice finish to it but the way they were from the factory they were just too wide, almost faded down away. They were just a really shocking fit. So that there now will be good, but I'll pop the guard off and we'll have a look down there at the bottom of that aftermarket sill there. I haven't yet put the hole in that. If you come around there, you'll have a look. This will be the same as the other side. We'll end up putting the 38 mil hole down in there so we can get that rust protection up inside the sill. But that, once that's done, we'll blast all that, that whole area, and that'll come up, we'll epoxy it all, and that'll be really good. But you can see there now what I've done. I've brought that out and up. It's nice and full again, how it should. It's got that right profile line right along it. Whereas before, they tend to come round and then fade down, and they're just an ill fit. So too, too ugly for me, I had to do something, and the other side will be done the same. So once the car's painted, you'll stand back and look at those lines and you will be happy, they'll all look uniform. And as I say, it'll blend from a small one up into a decent one to match up bonnet and cow. So that's my little fun and games thing I'm playing with at the moment. Okay, so what I'm about to do now is, is get the hole size right for, uh, for this original uh, bung that goes down the front of the sill there. And after cleaning that slot in the middle of that bung out, got all the old crap out of there. I've run those through there a couple of times and now to try and get a fairly good happy medium with that once that's in that groove there like that. And I'm trying to allow for the old distorted rubber and everything, but um, that at the moment, the way that's sort of in there pretty good, it's not too tight, not too loose. That's coming up with um, 35, 36, 37 mil uh, OD for that. So you can see there, it's got that groove or slot so it's a good idea in a way because what happens the, the actual sil sill skin it pushes through that very first one then slots inside and it locks that onto the sill so that's why I was saying earlier you want the size right so it fits and where this goes down here I've done a measurement off the old sill as you can see down here I'll give you a look at it the best that I could because it's so corroded away and distorted I've tried to get the position exactly where that should be for the alignment for that hole. So we come back onto the sill and basically where that bung will finish up is close to right about there when it's in the sill. So hopefully my measurements through here and through here are pretty correct and I've got the, uh, the 37 mil OD diameter for that bung now and once that's in that should just We'll, we'll probably go, I'd say, with brand new bungs anyway, but once it's done, as long as they're a fairly accurate fit to the old ones, that'll just push in the hole, push your inner skin of the, the bung in, if you like, and then the, in, in she goes and it'll lock into that groove. But it's very important, you know, if, especially um, if you're going to the degree that we have on this Tirana to get these things exactly right, because anyone that knows, they can look up through the bottom of that guard and they'll see that that is back to factory look. And even down to our little spot weld marks, we've put back in there, round the edge of that and right along to give it that authentic look again once it's all painted. But I'd rather spend a little bit of time now, you know, you get down to things like doing this, for instance, to get your exact measurements. And then you know that that thing is gonna go in there really good because there's nothing worse with these things if they don't fit right, they're a bit of a problem. But it's got a seal too, it's very important. You don't want water blowing up, creeping in around the edge of that bung to go down into your sill and start the old rust issues again that it had. 
So that's why I take the time now to get this correct. And uh, that should be the exact spot where that's come off or very, very close to it. So righto, I've got, uh, I've got my um, diameters there that I need, my, my um, marking points. I'll go and scribe that now, get that circle exactly right, and then I can chop that out and then I should be right there. Righto, so this hole's pretty close to being right now, so I've just finished there with that die grinder. I'll just deburr the rest of it now with a file, and when I'm happy with that, when it's a really precise fit for that um, little rubber grommet to go in there, I'll pop that in and just see how good uh, I went there with that hole size. But I think it's going to be pretty right, it looks pretty good. But um, any of those little um, filings that get, happen to fall down inside, I've got a magnet, I just drop down inside and pick them up. and once, once I'm finished here, what I'll do is I'll get some um, rust proofing uh, material and I'll get the gun right down inside that sill and I'll give it, give it a real nice shot right down inside the sill there. And then we'll put that bung in when the thing's finally painted. But at the moment, I'm pretty close to being right there, I think, with that uh, hole size. So we'll finish up this little bit of file here. Pretty nice and uh, true there, the size of it. I didn't use a, uh, a hole saw on this. I done it with that a little pneumatic um, saw, bit by bit, taking it out little by little, and then run the, the die grind around it just to, to get that nice radius. But I finished it up with a really fine little um, rat's tail file just to get that nice edge. Deburred the inside of it. So right there, that's fitting real good just there. That's measuring really well. We'll try and see how this rubber bung goes. But you can see there, as I said, the slide on these bungs, how the principle, how they work, they sit in like that. And hopefully this one will sit in exactly where I want it to. You push the inner part in, like so, and little by little, in she goes. And then if it's right, it should just pop in at the last and seal up beautifully. And in she goes. If I really give that a little bit of a turn like that to sit, seat that in, that should be nice. And there you go. That's that's what you're after. And what I what I was saying there before, whatever you do when you make these holes, if this is what you're going to do, don't make them marginally too big because the water will tend to hit, run down, get inside, and start rust. But they've got to be a fairly snug and precise fit. But that's missing just in there just nicely. It's got nice clearance there and exactly in line with where that factory one, where I took the measurements off, it's sitting in there really good up against this. But that's nice and tight, that's nice and snug and um, that'll be good for a long time now. But that's back to factory. Real happy with that's come up a treat. Okay, so the last little bit I've got to do on this sill now, 
Unfortunately, um, we duplicated, like I said, those, those couple of holes underneath those sills. And this new piece I've put on here had no hole, but thinking you're doing the right thing, I put that size hole right about there under the sill. Now I've got to go and make a little patch panel for that, weld that up under there. It's also got one back right there, the hole they've bored through the sill there, so I've got to fill that one in. That's the last little bit of work I have to do on this sill. Once that's done, then that's all completely ready to be sandblasted, that whole thing there. And that'll be a real good thing because I can actually move forward now past that. Oh, that little clamp works good. That little bugger there back in the day, it, the thread stripped out in it, so what I did was, I thought, bugger, this is still a good little clamp. Got a little bolt, little dome-headed bolt, slipped the nut on it, welded it round to give myself a little handle there, put a little nut on there, tacked it on, and instead of being the thread on the inside of this where it was all buggered, now that became the thread, and she's still a good little thing. It's a good little handy clamp, that. Right, so we'll get this one where I want it to be. It's too good, she's too tight. And trim this off. Righto, so that one's made up. A couple little buttons to fill in those holes under the sill. So now I'll just go and test fit them. And if they're good to go, I'll give them a shine up and we'll weld them in. How's it coming up, Pops? It's looking good. Yep, all done. That's where that hole was right there. That one's gone. I had that one, one back further, but it's come up a treat. Put some primer over it and that, and she's good to go, that one. Very nice. And you've done the back one as well? Done deal.
starting to straighten up. Actually, you got the worst of it already, so I missed that with the camera, but... Yeah, Mate, I'm too quick. I'm too good. That's still a bit dinted there. A little bit starting yeah. to come out, but she was all over yeah. the shop through there. So basically what Pops is doing now is making sure they're nice and straight. So then once we blast these areas, it's going to come up really nice and straight. And that first coat of primer saves a lot of work. She's had some layers of gunk on it over the years. Sure has, Pops. So now when Pops gets this right and perfect now, it saves all the work later. So once we run the sandblaster over the top of this, it's gonna bring it all back down to steel and then we put that epoxy primer, but we don't wanna have any dents later on when we epoxy it. So that's the reason why we do everything now, get the metal to be 100% correct now and then it saves a whole lot of uh, work later. You don't want to be going back and doing this later. We and will. also too, with this, when the car goes up on a hoist, you want to look along those pinch welds in the bottom of those sills. You want them to see them really nice and straight. Mm. There's nothing worse when they're all over the shop, they're up and down and guys just sort of go, ah, it's good enough. But it's a real feature, like along the bottom of that sill, you want them really nice. So we'll throw this guard on. I need to pre-fit everything before we weld these on and um, I just need to make sure that it's going to fit, fit nice and neat and the gaps are right. And then I need to make sure that they all line up. So the outers line up with the door skin. So they all line up this way. And I've also got really nice gaps. And then once I screw this on, then I can tack on this replacement section, like so under there, I'll tack that on when it's all screwed on. So I'll do that now. We'll just screw this guard on. I've already got it pretty much where I need it to be. So basically now this is a really important part and if this guard isn't on right and then I start to weld this lower section replacement panel on, if I attack that on and if it's not fitting, basically that's where it's gonna stay. So then when I go to weld the guard on, the rest of it's not going to fit. And um, like once we weld, spot weld the top on and it can all change that little bit, you lose a couple of mil here and there. So I need to make sure now that this is screwed on nice and tight and then this is where it's going to weld on. So important, this part. So I need to make sure that it's spot on. That's that one holding it in. All right, so like Mick just said, it's really super important for him to have this exactly where he wants this now, because basically 
what he's got there now is going to be what the car will have when it's all welded on. So he doesn't want this to move at all. This is very crucial now to get his perfect line up in the end. He's going to a fair bit of trouble to make sure that's all pinned down everywhere. Because once you start to weld little bits here and there, and if it moves a, a mill or two or a couple of a little bit of an increment here or there, it throws the whole thing out and it means a whole lot of work in the end. So that's why he's so particular in getting the screw down nice and tight. I just want to double check and we always use our stainless steel rulers because they don't move and basically they are 100% straight. So, you know, you've, you've got that nice straight edge along there and they won't move under heat or cold or anything like that. They are what they are being stainless. So they're dead straight, they're very accurate. And that's why, as you guys have noticed on all their episodes, we always use a ruler. So I basically now, this is where I need to have these the outer skins fitting perfectly and as you can see there it's, it's that close now once I tap it in and out the edges I'll be able to get a really nice finish and as my, Michael just said I'll point out one little thing that's really a good little hint or a tip with the stainless rulers that we use don't try and use something like a bit of wood or something like that because you're not going to get that real true exact finish. Yeah, so that, yeah, because wood actually moves under heat and when it's cold, wood can tend to move a couple of mil and bow. So it's the last thing you want to use. And it won't sit so, flush like that, that stainless. It, it's just perfect to get your, um, your measurements, your gauge of where you're at and everything, your heights, your levelness. Mm. It's just a real good way to go. Yeah, they, they don't lie, and they're always 100% accurate, hey, Pops? And if you, if you go back through the videos, you'll see where we use it all the time to make sure the work's correct. Okay, so I need to make sure before I tack this that it's fitting exactly where I want it to fit. And basically, if it's not perfect where I tack it, that's where it's going to stay. So if it's not right now, later on the gap's gonna be not right as well and it's not gonna look the part. So this is quite important to get this perfect now. So I'll just put a tack here. We just want that to stay exactly where it is. Okay, now where I've just tacked it, it's fitting absolutely perfect. So the body line, it's all running in line. I can rub that with a block all together. The outer skins as well, I can just block that with the primer coats. And same with the bottom of the door here. So once I go across all the way to the top, the gaps are about three to four mil. I'll have to measure them yet. So that's really important now. Now the next thing is, before I give it the next tack, I need to make sure that the outer skins are going to be dead straight. So I need to bring a guard out a little bit before I tack it. And that's about it there. So I'll hold them. I should have long pants on at the moment. Hopefully I don't get burnt. Okay, now that, that's tacked at the front.
right, so I've just let that cool down and then I'll keep welding. I don't want to get any distortion with this because I want to get this finish absolutely perfect. I want to file finish this so there's no fillers in here. Now, if I was to go and weld this up and I just did it carefree, it'd be all distorted and then I'd go and put a whole lot of filler in it, which I don't want to do. So I need to take my time welding this. And this is why when you're doing a really nice job in a resto, it takes time. filing for quite a while around the other side of this car so it's starting to concern me so I think I'm going to pop around and just see what he's up to because it might be getting a bit scary. Alright so looks like you're getting a bit serious here with those files. Yeah getting there Pops, I've, um, after welding that lower section in I decided, hey, if I'll finish it, as we do here, and uh, yeah, I've just been into it. It's nearly, it's nearly done. I've got a couple of little lows here, and um, or maybe I've dinted Hang on, moving mate. it Hang around. On. Let's rewind a little bit. Uh, the story I heard not so long ago was somebody accidentally dropped it, and um, yeah, mate, I had I had a rum in this hand, a beer in this hand, yeah, and so, um, yeah, the third that... hand, well, truth's coming out. Yep, yeah, <laughs> we won't go there. Yeah, righto. Back to what we were talking about. Let's get serious. Yeah, so basically now I'm just getting those last few lows out. But you can see where I've joined it there, Pops, with the camera picked that up, how nice the finish is where it's joined. Yeah, yeah, really good. And as we, you know, you guys know now, by now, if you've been watching file finishing, you can get that perfect finish and you can see how straight the files are. So you're going to get a perfect finish with a file. So there's no highs and lows and stuff like that. So I've just been working it where those welds were now and they're gone because once I epoxy prime this it's pretty much perfect off the first prime and we'll show that later but it takes about two to three coats of primer to get it perfect by the time you block it but yeah that's that's what I'm doing now so we've got the moon file here as you can see pops yeah half moon one or well, some people call them a belly file but that one that's a uh, finer blade. You can see it's got like a gazillion teeth on it, that thing. So comparison to the other one, if you look at that one, you put them side by side, Michael, so everyone can get to see the difference. And that's actually Sykes. Yeah, so. that's a proper um, pommy mate or English made tool. Yeah, so you can see the difference there in the amount of teeth as per one to the other. Like that half moon ones, it's uh, a much finer file with a flat blade one that's very coarse or a coarser blade. And that's, they're done for a particular reason. So Michael knows when he wants to chop a little bit down to start with, and then he can finish with a bit of a finer blade. But that half moon one, that's perfect in these sort of areas for a scallop like that. Yep. That'll get that really nice and straight through there. But the trick to all this file finish, like you see us guys do it, 
and we probably make it look a little bit simple but unless you've got your metal work really good to start with yep it doesn't matter how much you file you're not going to end up with a good result you, you could have actually ended up with a, a nasty result yeah very thin and uh, basically what happens is then so if i if this wasn't straight enough and then i keep filing you'll end up putting holes and you'll file through so then what happens is then you'll have to remake that whole patch and uh, go again and weld it all up again so um basically yeah it's one of those things hey you've definitely got to be very careful so your metal work's got to be good to start with it sure does so but you can see that so that's a low these little black spots same with there got a little bit of a low so you can still still see that weld there and it's very hard to get in behind there there's a bracket on these guards um, so i've just got to work my way and just push that out as i go and just a little bit more filing not too much but that's coming up absolutely perfect Still so got that inner, inner lip there to weld up Mick. yeah so i'll fit that back on and i'll finish welding the inner lip yep. and uh basically then it's just same story just finish it up and then i've got to finish welding the corner where it's all buggered as well so even that tiny little low there like that will prime out as well so i'll get this a little bit better here i want to get rid of that weld just for shrink back and stuff like that but you know this is um how you this is like the ultimate finish so as we've said in the past we just love this how it comes up and um so just a comparison mick when you've done your trade yeah now if you were to finish that at tafe yeah what would they expect of you by the time you'd finish that for a pass so to pass basically everything we worked on was all fit file finished so to pass there would be no lows left in any of this at so, all at all yep. so every panel so if there was any dints then we'd come along push them out and up um, all yeah all your pretty much where you've welded everywhere there's no signs of it been re being repaired so it's invisible it's invisible um, and also there's no fillers so there, there is no fillers at all so this is you finish by steel file finish and if there's any lows yeah you just can't pass yep so um so yeah, that was when I did, yeah, did my time, but it's just, it is what it is, but there was no fillers at all. That so was part I didn't of even learn how to use a filler at the time. That so. was part of your requirement to, to actually get a pass. Yeah, yep. The first uh, two, three years, you know, you, you're hands on. And when so. typically a class of guys, when you kicked off, how many would be in your class? Oh, I think there was 12. I can't remember now, three of us finished. Three, only three. Yeah, wow. even, um, um mick Casmatis at the time said he was my teacher i had a couple paul uh even they said you know if you can do this in another 20 years it's going to be a dying art and if you can do it there's going to be guys a big demand in this yep. and um there is now so we're, we're very busy obviously it takes time but you know this is this isn't one of those things for everyone this is for specific guys that want their cars file finished and it is what it is so yeah you know we, we're giving what we can do and this is our uh, yeah it's one of those things yeah so right, i better grab the phone yep better get the phone pops Okay, so the guard's back on, and you can see why it's so important to get these body lines right. So when they run in line with the door body lines, they will look really good. Now the top needs a little bit more work, as you can see there. The factory, it's not perfect, so I need to push it out a little bit more, get it a little bit higher here. The rest of it's really good. It's come up a treat, so I've got a little bit more work to go. But I'm going to leave that now and I'll wait until we have the front radiator support actually welded in and then we're getting serious at that point. And um, then we'll weld these guards on 
and I'll know exactly where I want these to line up perfectly when I file this up to this one. Alrighty, we're getting somewhere now. Alright Pops, go easy with the glass please. We don't need any accidents today. Mate, you're talking to a professional here, not a beginner, alright? Come on mate, you never know. Just watch yourself there, don't bugger this window up. Check this out, I'm actually holding it in. He's trying to pull it out and I'm holding hey, it Hey, is that why it won't come out? <laughs> come on. Righto mate, you can have it. Righto. Tricks, right. tricks to the trade, hey. Alright, hey, I've had enough, that's it. I'm going, I'm out of here. <laughs> yep. Keep it real, keep it right, we'll catch you next time. <laughs> He's hanging in. <laughs> Alright, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.